March 8, 2014, Malaysia Air Flight 370 carrying 239 passengers and crew members flying from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing disappeared. The disappearance of this flight is now one of the greatest aviation mysteries of all time. And at the time of the disappearance, the authorities launched the largest aviation search in history. Investigators performed an intricate mathematical calculation that indicated where the plane would be within a margin of error. But after an extensive search that cost hundreds of millions of dollars, nothing of the plane was found. It seems the plane vanished in thin air. But of course, that's not possible. Or is it? Tonight's guest has been going viral. He has some pretty incredible claims about what happened that day. Ashton Forbes is the organizer of MH370X, a community-led crowdsourced investigation group dedicated to solving the mystery of MH370 and the science behind what Ashton says is advanced technology that was deployed on the plane. Ashton is a government contractor with a security clearance unrelated to anomalous phenomenon. He says he's not bound by any NDAs and everything he reveals is publicly available information. Since he's come out with his extensive research, many have tried to debunk him, however, unsuccessfully. Now there's even a payment offering by Kim.com of $145,000 to anyone who can debunk what Ashton is about to claim. And before we get to the interview, let me tell you about tonight's sponsor, Imagine this, you slide into a pair of gravity defier shoes and suddenly you feel like you're walking on clouds. It's like your feet are getting a big comfy hug with every step. Let me tell you about the revolutionary comfort of gravity defier shoes. So whether you're a busy professional, an active mom or dad, or just someone who's on their feet or constantly on the go, gravity defier has the perfect pair for you. All of you, UCLA Medical Center conducted a double blind study proving that gravity defier shoes reduce 85% of knee pain using their patented shock absorption VeroShock technology. And for a limited time, our friends at Gravity Defier are offering an exclusive limit holiday season deal. Use code KIM30 for $30 off orders of $100 or more at gdefy.com. That is gdefy.com just in time for the holidays. So from work to workouts, date nights to weekends, Gravity Defier has a style for every occasion. And with this exclusive offer, there's no reason to settle for anything less than the absolute best for your feet. So again, head to gdefy.com, pick your style, and remember to use the code KIM30 at checkout for $30 off of orders of $100 or more. And this offer does expire December 20th, so treat your feet to the comfort they deserve. Ashton Forbes, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks, Kim, for having me. And thanks for your audience for listening in. So the evidence we're going to present today. Yeah, and if somebody's able to debunk it, they're able to get $145,000. Can you tell us about this um, this sort of bounty on the evidence uh, yeah, so first I, off? Yeah, I've got to give credit to Kim.com. Uh, I didn't uh, you know, talk to him ahead of time about this bounty, but he came up with this ingenious idea that he would put this $100,000 bounty out there, which now has been added to by the Investigate Earth podcast. They threw in a $20,000 on it. And then a wealthy donor reached out to me personally, got in touch with them, talked to them. Turns out they've run for higher office before, and they threw in another 25,000. Now, to be clear for this bounty, you know, you can't put in a lazy debunk and say, oh, I think I found it from a 90s video game effect. If these were hoaxed, then there is somebody out there who made them, who is a master artist, who understands physics better than PhDs, understands uh, engineering better than many engineers. And they have theoretically are going to have a hard drive full of the information and data that they use to put these masterpieces together. You need to find that person and you need to bring that source work to us and you can collect $145,000. So there's no excuse for these debunkers. You got YouTubers out there that have 6 million uh, subscribers. You know, you've got the resources to find this person. We've got hundreds of millions of impressions on social media. There's no excuse not to find them. Okay, so let's get to um, the, the footage. Tell us about where this footage came from. This is, let's actually show this. So this is the original stereoscopic footage, right? So this is the side-by-side -side footage. And yes. what we're seeing are, we see pl the plane flying. So how do we know for sure that this is MH370? Yeah, so the first indication is the only missing 777 that's out there. 
when you look at this satellite footage, we can see that it's light on the top and dark on the bottom, which is the same as Malaysian Airlines, which is white on the top with a red and white stripe and gray on the bottom. We can see these coordinates mm -hmm. in the bottom left of the screen. It actually changes six times as the perspective changes. It actually changes eight, but we can only see the coordinates in six. Turns out that's the Nicobar Islands. This is actually the exact location where this plane was an agreed upon flight path by everybody until it turned into the South Indian Ocean, according to the official narrative, which we believe is just bunk and that there's plane just simply never went to the South Indian Ocean. Um, in the thermal image as well, it's an exact overlay of MH370. So the pretty much the least controversial aspect of this case is that that's MH370 in there. I think most people, if even the debunkers would agree that there's really no other plane this could possibly be. It really needs to be this plane. Um, even while it's turning, we've shown that it's maxing out the capabilities of a 777-200 while in descent. If it wasn't descending, that it would actually be exceeding those maximum capabilities. So what we think we're seeing here, or we're, actually I think what we know we're seeing is we're seeing an emergency turn where this plane is potentially trying to do an emergency landing very low. And that's indicated by these cumulus clouds we see in the background. These cumulus clouds mm. only form between 1,000 and 5,000 feet. So this plane has to be at a very low altitude. Okay. So what are, so, so what is it? Why is it side by side footage? Why do we see two different images? And there's a little bit of controversy about this side by side. Now, when we're looking at it, we do see two different angles. Initially, when I looked at this, I thought we must be seeing some duplicated footage for some reason. Yeah, it looks like As it's the same it, to me, like two, yeah, two of the same. But it's slightly different. So okay. uh, if this is, so this means that this is stereoscopic. Stereoscopic means you're looking at it with two different cameras, the same way with our eyes that we see with, you know, two slightly different angles with our eyes where we can build a 3D image. Uh -huh. And that's how human beings see. Same idea with the satellites here, but these satellites are in outer space. And so the idea okay. here then is that they're so far away that you can barely see a difference, but we actually have uh, several proofs, videos that are out there that show that if you flip between side A and side B, that you see the clouds from slightly different angles, parallax effect. Right. Okay. So where, where did this come from? The footage was originally posted by Regicide and Non account, which is a UFO uploader account. Dates all the way back, according to the Internet Archives, to either March 12th, 2014, if you believe the received date in the description of the Regicide and Notton video, or the published date of that video says May 19th, 2014, which is just 72 days after the event. We believe that okay, that so this long was period uploaded time, to oh, YouTube. Yes, this uploaded, uploaded to, YouTube to YouTube by this account. And the uh -huh. second video of the drone uh, was uploaded, it says received June 5th, 2014, uh, published June 12th, 2014. So there's much less of a lag time in that second video. Okay. So the thinking is that somebody uploaded this on March 12th, but then they didn't, they hesitated on publishing and they didn't publish it until May. That's the thinking. That's the current thinking. Yes. Okay. Um, and then do we know where this, like which satellites were that took this footage or uh, yep. You know, because then so, able to look at this and say, oh, it's clearly faked. Right? That's what yeah, a lot of people look at that. And even I think I looked at, I saw the drone footage back in 2014. We know that there's thousands of people that saw these videos back in 2014 as well. We've even been able to find a Reddit thread just as of the last couple of days that date back eight years that describe these videos as well from two different perspectives. And we were able to reverse engineer and figure out what satellite was in the area. Um, USA-229 is a NOS Naval Ocean Surveillance Satellite pair, not just one, but two satellites right next to each other. They were in the area looking down at the Nicobar Islands at 1840 UTC on March 7th, 2014, staring right at the agreed upon flight path of the plane. Not only that, we looked through the press conferences and we actually got the Malaysian Minister of Defense asking a question where somebody asks, we know there's spy, U.S. spy satellites in the regions. Have you been in contact with them? And he responds, yes, yes. Pretty much giving away the game there, telling us that the United States government 100% had imagery of, these, of the plane in the area where they supposedly claim it turned into the South Indian Ocean, or we're claiming that this footage was taken. Okay. And these orbs. So what's interesting about these this footage is that there's these three orbs flying around this plane, and then the plane seems to vanish. 
So that's yeah. what we're is that, that is that that's what we're seeing here. Yeah, and we dug into this. We looked through a few different possibilities of what type of event we could be seeing. First of all, could it be cloaking? The problem with cloaking is that we see this smoke or exhaust that's coming out of the back of the plane stop the moment that the plane disappears. If it was a cloaking event, you would be able to cloak potentially all aspects of the plane, but you wouldn't be able to cloak the byproduct of the plane. Then early okay. on, I thought, well, this had to be annihilation, that this plane is just being destroyed somehow, deatomized to some degree. Yeah. But the problem there is that if we go back to high school physics, we remember that E equals MC squared, which means that every bit of mass has a huge amount of potential energy in it. So if this plane is being destroyed the same way that a nuclear bomb would work, it's going to release so much energy that it would destroy part of the planet. Certainly a lot more than we see from these zaps that we see in both videos. Now, lastly, what that leaves then is a teleportation event. Now, teleportation is a crude approximation of what we'd be talking about. I don't like to refer to it as teleportation or even a wormhole. Really, what we're talking about is a macroscopic phase conjugation, macroscopic quantum coherence. So this plane is undergoing a phase state change. And this is the reason why these clouds nearby don't get blasted away. This is the reason why the clouds don't get sucked in, because we're not dealing with a type of black hole. We're dealing with something that is more akin to what we see when we look at the double slit experiment, which is the most mysterious experiment in physics, that there's a wave function that breaks down when we observe. And if we can uh, reverse that to some degree in physics, then what we can do is we can have the plane move from a definitive point to a probabilistic point, essentially like cheating in a video game where you can just move from one location to the other. Now, the engineers that I've been talking to, because I believe that if these videos are real, we can describe every, or we can explain every aspect of these videos, including the science, state that essentially what can happen here is that you can build, from a layman's term, kind of a bubble around the plane to cause it to undergo this phase state change, where then it can be quantum entangled. These three orbs can be quantum entangled to a fourth orb that can be in a different location. It can accelerate to uh, superluminal speeds, speed of light or beyond which is why we don't see it in the cameras, which have a fixed frame rate. It's moving so fast that we can't even see it happen. And then it's going to appear at the location of this fourth orb in potentially the very near future. So, uh, I mean, and I, I am not a scientist, I'm not a physicist, so this is very difficult for people like me to <laughs> totally grasp, um, but just in layman's terms, so, did an alien abduct this airplane? Is that what we're was that what we're saying that this was that aliens came and took the plane? That is definitely not what I'm <laughs> saying. Uh, okay. and I think that a lot of people want to kind of uh, be able to put down the investigation by claiming that they think the aliens took the plane. Um, what I'll say is that when I first saw these videos, I was so blown away at what I potentially was seeing if they were real that even I thought this must be non-human intelligence. It must be technology that's thousands of years more advanced than we are. As I've dug into the case and followed the evidence using the scientific method, coming up with a hypothesis, matching the evidence, trying to figure out what makes the most sense, come to realize that this is most likely our technology. This is U.S. government technology on here. Some of the strongest evidence is that the people who are filming this, the big question people ask is, why are they filming? We're filming for intelligence purposes. Why is there a drone there that can't catch the plane? Because the drone intercepted the plane. Why are we filming before the orbs even show up? because this is an operation. Why does the drone zoom out right before the zap happens in the drone video? Again, because they're expecting it. When I dug into the technology, started talking with engineers, I ended up having to create my own podcast because people wanted to talk to me about it, physicists and engineers, because they tell me we can explain this. That in my mind, what we're looking at here is we're looking at third party contractors technology. If I had to guess, I'd say it's Lockheed Martin's technology. Now, in my mind, we can't be this secretly advanced without help. So I would speculate that there is some type of reverse engineering program out there consistent with what whistleblower David Grush has told to Congress, who he sounds credible to me. I think it's a very high risk to speak to Congress under penalty of perjury. Um, so I don't really have any reason not to believe him. And as I've looked into UFOlogy these last five or six years since I've become interested in it, it does seem like there's something there. So, you know, mm -hmm. that, I can't say with the certainty this is a reverse engineering program situation, but I do th think 100% of my mind that we are looking at terrestrial human technology, and it may even be possible, uh, although I put a very low probability, that we have 
actually gotten this advanced since we split the atom in the 40s. You know, I don't think we've been doing nothing okay. for the last 90 years. So the, the reason why you think this is not alien and is because the, the fact that the cameras were there watching this as if they were looking for this event specifically. And if it was like an unknown alien event, then it wouldn't have been so obviously captured on video is what you're saying. Yeah, either we got really lucky and we just happened to catch this yeah. non-human event, one in a bazillion chance, or this was just an operation. They were ready to go with it the whole time. Okay. Because right now, how many, how many cameras do we have on this, on this event? Three, when you consider so we have at least that there's two, two eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So two, when you look at the stereoscopic footage, that could be like two cameras from one device, right? Looking at it. Yeah, if it's, if it's uh, so that cameras, would be like one device. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it is, then it's USA 229, where we've got this, the sister satellite right next to USA 229, looking down, capable of taking this 3D stereoscopic imagery. And then we've got this MQ-1C Gray Eagle. We believe these are being connected okay. by the SIGINT system, where this is a signals intelligence system of basically an internet of military assets that are communicating to one another that can relay this information to AWACS, which are these radar planes that we have out there, where you've got 20 people inside these planes with um, television screens, and they're able to control and look at this uh, intelligence and then relay this intelligence to leadership in military. Okay, so um, we've got two different cameras who've picked this up. These have been uploaded by two different accounts, right? Same is that, account, is that but right? But other that accounts have also uploaded oh, them. Oh, same so account. Regicide and Non okay. uploaded both of these footage. There could be earlier footage out there, but if there is, the Internet Archive doesn't have it. These are the earliest ones that we can find. There were later versions okay. that were uploaded of both of these videos, and at least some of them are in higher quality, which would indicate that neither of them was the potential source, that there was a third-party source of the footage. Uh -huh. um, and that, again, kind of goes to the credibility of the situation. The registered and non-account in it, not only does it have this, the receive date, it also says source protected. Their other videos don't say source protected. They say source email submission. Um, and so this would indicate that they even potentially had to be convinced that what they were looking at was real. They might not have known. And even the person that leaked the videos might not have known that they were looking at terrestrial technology. The video description is very vague. It says satellite video, airliner, and UFOs. Now, if this is somebody that knew that this was advanced U.S. contractor technology, why wouldn't they have said advanced technology instead of UFOs? And why doesn't it say MH370 okay. in it? So you think the person who leaked these videos was just somebody in the military who saw this and thought, oh, my gosh, aliens? So I got to show the world these, you know, another alien sighting. Sort of More video. than that, I think that they probably thought this is the only way we're ever going to get the truth of MH370. They had an emotional reaction. If they gave this footage to Regicide Anon within four days, then they were most likely mm -hmm. there that night. This has to be a U.S. military personnel. If they have two different assets from U.S. Uh, intelligence, they would have to be very high in the security clearance and have compartmentalized access. They cropped out the drone in the, in the satellite video. It's just off the screen to the, to the top of the screen. They remove the HUD data in the drone video, which we believe comes from a Raytheon multispectral targeting camera. They uh, also thermalize that. Not only do they remove the HUD data, but they thermalize it. And when they're cropping out all this information, removing this information, it seems like they're trying to minimize the damage to US intelligence, but they leave the coordinates there. They want us to know exactly mm -hmm. the location of this plane. And then it would be easy to figure out because this is the agreed upon location of the craft. Now, if this was a hoax, it would all fall apart the moment we find a plane, right? But this isn't 2014, 2015 anymore. This is 2023, and the official search found literally nothing. Not above or below water. Yeah. We searched everywhere. 